Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today is something a little different. I was sent um, some product from the washi tape shop. Uh, so we're doing a collaboration slash affiliation. Uh, they sent me a whack load of washi tapes to explore and try out. And uh, I'm just blown away by how beautiful they are. You can see they've sent me a lot. And so we're going to do a couple of projects with them, some decorative elements, and uh, show you how pretty these tapes are and how versatile they can be. Um, I did open most of them because I was so excited. <laughs> and I did leave one wrapped up that I have not looked at yet. So I thought we would open this together. Uh, this is how they arrive. They arrive in a box and they're, the sets are all individually wrapped with a sticker at the top and their logo on the side and the scan code on the bottom. And they just come in this really pretty paper. So I tried to save the, the paper, but it's, it's pretty delicate. So I just kind of, I was excited too. So I just kind of ripped it, ripped it all. So this is one I have not seen yet. And it's just so much fun woo, to open all these and just start letting your imagination go a little, a little crazy. So, oh, these are really pretty. So this is a completely different set than some of the others I've received. And this is one here. I, uh, this is kind of like a wildflower one. So very pretty. Very easy to incorporate into a journal. And uh, I, that's what I really find I like about washi tape because I was never a huge washi tape user. Um, but since receiving this, my my um, appreciation for washi tape has changed because it's it just gives you a new element to play with and really have fun with. So here's some kind of little labels and these ones, so that some of them are stickers like this one where the individual piece pulls off. And then I'll show you the other ones. Some of them are full sheets. So again, just new new ideas, new variations. So there's another one a little bit narrower and you can decorate in here. So that's that one. Here's some flowers. So these will be individual. They peel off. Uh, let's see here. They peel off an individual flower by the looks of it. Oops, that one's stuck. So yeah, the flower peels off individual. So again, very simple to use an instant elevation in your journaling or scrapbooking or whatever it is you're into. Okay, well that was really pretty. So as you can see, my box is full. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to put them. I'm gonna need another box. Okay, I'm going to put these ones aside and I want to show you some other ones. So these ones I was instantly drawn to, these birds. I just love the gold in them. And uh, on their, in their store they have huge variety of different kinds of tapes with different themes. And I don't know if you can see the gold in that, but it's just so pretty. So I was instantly drawn to these ones because if you watch my channel, you know I'm drawn to vintage neutral colors. But then I also found these kind of floral ones really beautiful to play with. And I'm going to show you some ideas here. And you can see, now I just cut my nails. So you can see, actually I didn't cut them, they broke when I was gardening. This is a full sheet here. So again, different application, lots of fun. And I did do, where did I put everything? So I have so much to show you. It's gonna be a bit of a long video. So here's some samples of the washi tape stuck down. And this one, this washi tape, I believe is this one here with the butterflies. How pretty is that? So again, it's a full sheet. And I stuck it down to different colored papers because I wanted to see the effect that it would have. So you can see it in instantly changes the effect of the washi tape and makes it even more versatile. So it's got a, a bit more of a vintage feel on the colored papers and a bright new fresh look on the white paper. And again, you could put it on things like book pages where the book page will transfer through because it's such a thin fabric. Now, um, I should have asked them what it's actually made with. I didn't do a lot of research on it. I just again, received them and played with it, uh, but they are, they're not plasticky feeling. So the image themselves might feel a little plasticky, but the, it almost feels like a fabric, like a woven cloth of some kind, 
thin, almost like a medical tape feel, if you're familiar with that medical tape. But it is, it's hard to describe really. Let me grab the end here. But you can see it's kind of a transparency, almost like there's a fiber in there and then it's laid out with some sort of resiny glue. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you can ask them that question at the, uh, at the shop if you pop in and have a look. So there is a co product code link in my description box because this is uh, an affiliation. So there will be a 10% discount for those who do order. And if you use my um, code that I will also include in the description box, this is the first time I've ever done, a, I guess, a type of sponsorship. And uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, so if you use that product code, then you can get the 10% off and I also get uh, a commission on that as well, just so you know and everybody realizes um, that uh, I do get a cut. I want you guys to know that. So again, just if you want, go check them out and let's get started on some really fun projects. So <laughs> you can see I've been a little busy. So this is a, the washi tape here that I've turned into like a little journal closure. Um, I did another one here. We're going to do this today. So we're going to make one of these and we're going to make one of these washi tape dangles because they're just so cute. Um, and then I went a little crazy playing with washi tape in a journal. <laughs> I was like, I need to just stick this washi tape everywhere. So I've made these little, um, uh, what are they called? I don't even know what they call them. Like a, a, de a decorative paper clip closure which just has some washi tape uh, two styles of the washi tape and you can write in it so there's those um there here's another book closure so it's just an elastic ribbon with uh, a dangle off the corner and just very simplified elegant piece of washi tape that's stuck down and and um added some what's that called that stuff called ink to it uh, did these here so covered a piece of old scrap with washi tape and just made a little journal that slides in a pocket with washi tape <laughs> yeah a little nuts here's a little scrap piece I just covered in washi tape for a little co a little um, bookmark and then I played with sheets of the washi tape to decorate the book itself so no it's just like plain papers or used papers. And I went ahead and decorated the whole book with washi tape. So here's another little one you can journal in. Um, here's the pocket. So this slides in and out. So decorated the bend of the, I'm not gonna go through, like I'm not gonna demonstrate the journal. Um, and then just a piece of old handwritten paper that has been decorated with the washi tape. So what else did I make? Yeah, I went a little bonkers. As soon as I started opening the box, I just, the juices, the creative juices started going and I couldn't help myself. Here's another one. These are cute and they're super easy and fast to make all scraps and cheap paper clips. Here's a corner pocket that I did uh, out of washi tape. So you just kind of stick things in there. And then I did a little dangle off the side here. And I think that's as far as I got. Oh, and then a circle with some washi tape behind it. So I was gonna do circles all the way up, but I ran out of time on that one. So that's as far as I got in this journal. This, well, it's not a full journal, but a signature. So some ideas there you can play with. I'll move that out the way because I really wanna, I really wanna make these today. I really enjoyed making these. Now you do need some materials um, other than the beautiful washi tape. You're going to need some resin if you wanna make these and some jewelry bits and bobs. Um, and just dive into your repertoire and see what you've got. Now you don't have to use the resin. You can use this hard cardstock, but uh, the resin is really fun to play with. I ordered it on Amazon. I got this stuff here and it's a hard type crystal clear fast curing resin and uh, there's a lot of it. That should last me a long time. And then I got this little kit at Michael's which is the UV light that cures the resin really quick. Now you can use um, solar power. You can be put it outside. It just takes a little longer. I don't have patience. So I think I paid 40 bucks 
for this and I make you know jewelry accessories and everything with it so it's a lot of fun but I've never done it on paper before so I thought it'd be fun to try using the resin on paper as opposed to in a mold so here's some of the washi tape as well which we're going to play with so you can just see that beautiful gold I just love it and some others where they're just the washi tape on a on a thick cardstock just so much fun to use okay enough talking let's get playing so I want to uh there's more here to show you like this is just so pretty so maybe we'll use one of these what should we do let's use let's make a really big closure really big journal closure so I'm just going to cut along here in between images so the images over and over again these are really pretty you can put the title of the book and your journal on that so the possibilities just keep going on how pretty the bird is and again this has that gold reflection and now I've used a lot of this tape already and I'll show you how much comes on these tapes I've used a lot and you get you get quite a bit for your buck so that is um it's not a full roll because I have used it so here's a full roll we just opened and I've used uh, probably I'd say almost two feet of this already so you get quite a bit already so we got this one and then I if I have leftovers from cutting so there's another one and another one that I haven't used for something uh, then I just stick it in the box and use it later so let's do let's pick one of these which one do we want to do um, this is so pretty. Let's do this one. <laughs> Decision making. All right, so I've got this one. And maybe we'll do a blue one. So I want to show you how pretty this blue is. I don't know if that's on screen or not. But this blue is really stunning as well. So maybe we could do a small one. And you can cut the elements out, which is fun with washi tape. So. You know, I'm going to go around this sky because I want just this blue flower. And these muted blues are really stunning. You have the vibrant bright blue, and then you have, I'm going to put that with my stash. And then you have the soft blue, which I'm really drawn to this color here. That, uh, it came with solid rolls as well. So there's a really pretty one to decorate a page with. And maybe I'll, I'll probably end up doing more videos as well because I, like you can see, I have tons to use up. Um, here's some little labels here, some tiny little decorative uh, pieces that you can make super quick, super quick decorations with. Okay, I have that one. I have that one. Uh, and then I want the birds. Where's the birds? Oh, and I got this one's really pretty too with the flowers. This is the one with that gold fern. So you can see it just is so pretty. Let me just keep going. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just put that aside. It's going to take me like five minutes to roll back up. All right. Let's get the birds. Because I do really like making these little charms with the birds. So we'll use this guy. Let's do two. And I will use this guy. Again, tons of birds on here. All right, I'm gonna move this box aside out of the way. Oh, here's another sample I had. So here's the one with the big and the little charm. Oh, and this little paper clip here. So, like I said, just keeps going and going. <laughs> so I'm going to stick the bird down on a white piece of paper. I thought I had brought just white out. Well, where did I put it? You want something pretty strong? Do you want anything too flimsy when it comes to using this resin? I've noticed they kind of curve if the paper's too thin. Um, I think I'm going to try glue this down. I haven't done this before. I don't know if the resin will make it peel apart or not, but I don't want this. Actually, that would be all right in the back. Never mind. Let's just do that. So I'm going to stick the birdie down. So bear with me while I peel. My fingers are freezing. It's so cold in my house right now. 
our temperature has dropped significantly again. So it's like, hey, spring's here. And they're like, no, nope, we lied. It's not here. We're going back to fall-like weather. And uh, it's cold. My fingers are cold. So when they're cold, they don't cooperate as easily. Like I couldn't draw right now, that's for sure. It's just too cold. I think I'm going to take my scissors and just snip the rest of this stick off. I don't want all that. I don't make it too delicate. And then I'll put that there. So we'll, let's get these rolling while we work on the other stuff because they can cure in the resin light and the UV light. So I just cut them out now. And I just fussy cut around. You can leave a white border. You can leave it square. I think I have one here that's square like this. This doesn't have resin on it, but I left it square. So you can do that. These ones I want to turn into basically little charms because I think they're so adorable. I mean, the washi tape nowadays is so elevated and so much fun to use. I had no idea. Okay, so that's one. Let's cut this one. So you can fast forward this if you like. <laughs> Cut away. Practice your cutting skills. Like I said, my fingers are cold, so hopefully I don't chop anything off I don't need. Little detail, lots of detail, whatever you like. Now, this is probably nothing new, but this is new to me. I have never done resin on paper before until I got this washi tape and experimented. So I had a, I had a lot of fun with that. And a lot of mess. I made a lot of mess, which I am notorious for anyway. So this little mat here, and then I grab my resin and a little stick, and I just put a generous amount on. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll move that stick around. And I'll show it to you close, close up once it's um, cured. But you're basically just moving the resin to the edge. And my resin's even cold. Because it's not as flowy as it usually is. <laughs> I wasn't lying to you when I said it's cold in here. And I basically just move my resin all the way to coat all the way around. It kind of self-levels, I find. You can use a lighter uh, and eliminate any air bubbles, but with these smaller projects like this, I find I don't get any air bubbles when I'm doing it on the paper. Now that I said that, there's an air bubble. <laughs> Let me smooth it out rid of it and you can wear gloves of course I mean resin is pretty toxic stuff I, I would imagine um, but I'm trying not to touch it at all and I'm just smoothing it out and making these little charms I mean you can make jewelry out of these earrings little necklace accessories little charms which is basically what we're making I just want to make sure that's covered and put them a little closer together and I'm going to find a scrap to put this on right there and then you drop this guy over and hit the button and it does the UV so I'm going to just move that aside off camera I'll probably press it about three or four times and I give it about three minutes to cure because I use a thick amount of resin and the next thing we'll start is this cute little closure that I really like I've been using them a lot. So I have some leftover Carson drawing board, which is basically a very thick um, cardboard for drawing and, and painting. Um, so you do want something pretty sturdy. You can glue a bunch of different things together to create the thickness. And you want it strong because you're going to put elastic through it or ribbon through it 
and you're going to tie the journal off so it's going to take a little bit of a beating on the um, edges that uh, that um, have the elastic thread through so I'm just going to grab the end here so I'll throw some of that and I'm going to just stick it down as best I can as neat as I can. You know me, I'm not fussy about perfection. I almost like imperfect more. And this one I think is a full sheet, so we'll fussy cut around this just a little bit just to tidy it up. Just so if we ink it, when it grabs the ink on the edge of the washi tape, it will be even and not messy. So some of these are stickers, like that gold one with the fern in it that I showed you. Those ones were stickers when this is a full roll. So something to look at, too, when you're buying washi tape. But it sure is nice to have this versatility and this instant kind of ephemera, really, in the sense that you can just peel and stick. And one thing I've noticed about this washi tape is it's got a good adhesion to it which I also really like. I think that's one of the things that turned me off washi tape originally was I didn't want to have to put glue to something that's already supposed to be sticky. So washi tape's famous for not sticking for very long. When I've made these about a week ago, these demos, and they haven't budged, they haven't peeled, they haven't rolled, uh, nothing. And I've been moving them all over my desk, back and forth. So, um... It's got a nice adhesion to it, this tape, but also can peel off, uh, which I want to do another demo with watercolor in these. If I can get these peeled, <laughs> I've left myself no edge to peel. Come on. Today. Well, really? is where you need editing software so you don't drive your viewers nuts I mean, you're not fussy like this <gasps> got it yes oh so satisfying okay oh shoot I just right it all right nope just a little lower than that let's put it right here okay see even though I ripped it still works let's just check these guys Okay, so those are done. I flip these over and cure the other side so they are ready to roll. And again, you could choose something nice on the back. Oops, lid off would help. And I like to cure both sides just for more stability. Let's spread this out a bit. You don't have to. I mean, like I said, you don't have to use resin at all. But this is quite fun to experiment with. Like I said, you could do jewelry. You could do all kinds of fun stuff with this. And yeah, it's kind of an initial expensive um, hobby to start. But uh, I warn you though, it is a little addictive. And then your imagination starts really having fun with it because you start thinking, ooh, I, like your pressed flowers. Now you can make a little necklace with or make a dangle with that. And it just keeps going and going. All right. I'm rushing a little bit, but you take your time and smooth this out. I do find it kind of self-levels itself. on that before I forget I'm going to get a new desk at some point because I found I was watching one of my videos and boy was it ever echoey on this desk I don't like it so I do apologize if when I put something drop something down and it has that echo sound it's just one of these Costco desks I'm using right now okay I'll put that on the scrap and again, I'm just going to move this over here and hit that UV button. And we'll move back to this. 
Alrighty. I've got my cutter. Because this stuff's thick, so I wanna I need to use a cutter for this. And I'm going to just eyeball it. So the washi tape, it looks like it's about three inches wide. In case you're wondering the width of that washi tape. That's well, pretty wide tape. Alright, and go this side. It's so thick I have to cut it twice. And I still didn't cut even. Alright, let's try that again. I'm just gonna use my scissors and clean up that edge, sorry. Alright, go. go this way now. Go down here. It's just because of this thick artist board that I'm using. And like you've seen me before, even with a cutter, I can't cut straight. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so there's that one. And let's cut this one. Uh, let's cut it this way first to see how wide I want to make it. My evening frame. There we go. I haven't filmed a video in a little while now. I've been so busy. I hope you're all doing well. So we can leave it that big even and you can add other things to it, but I think I'm gonna simplify it for this video. Put it off center like this. That's kind of fun too. Different design. But you can make a whack of these journal closures because that's one of the things I struggle with the most is how to close my journal. I um, I find I, I'm not very creative with the closures. I usually just wrap ribbon around it or sorry ribbon or something. Um, but I really like making these. And they're easy to make and you can make a whack load of them. Okay, put the scissors on top. He's gonna all be looking for those. So that's that simple. Um, and then I need, so you can use your your gator. Now I didn't get this stuff out ready. My apologies. I have to get up. Um, so you do need some tools here, some uh, cutters. You can use your gator with your fasteners. Should have got those out. Okay. So this I got, I think I got this off Amazon. I really liked it because it's kind of got that a vintage vibe to me. And um, I really like how it does an instant slot for ribbons and things. And um, uh, you can really have fun with it. So you can put them top and bottom and have a closure go around your journal like that or you can go this way so I don't think I've done one this way so I think I will now I'm going to turn it sideways because this thing fires out and we'll go right at the camera I'm just going to go this side now and this way and it manages to get through that this thick board which is great so this one we'll do with our we'll do with our gator here so i just put a hole in and again it goes through this stuff no problem and we'll get our little closures out so like i said this video is going to be a little longer because i also want to do some dangles with you who's like a dangle put that back i am taking my time and putting things away as well so I don't go nuts I'm trying to find things in 10 minutes all right so I put these in I gotta I gotta fix this to go to the wide one this one to go to the wide one all right and let's squeeze that in and this just reinforces now this cardstock's so heavy you don't really need the reinforcements but it does have a nice polished finish and the silver plays nicely against these blues. All right, there we go. And like mine aren't even perfectly straight, but again, I'm not a perfectionist. That stuff really doesn't bother me, but you can really take your time and 
get it straight if it's something that might drive you a little bonkers. Okay, so I want to ink next. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper here. Get some more on that ultraviolet light. And let's see what inks. I treated myself to some new inks. I got some salvage patina. Bundled Sage, I love this one, this Rusty Hinge. I use this one a lot. The Frayed Burlap's a little dirty for me. Crushed Olive's really pretty, and I'm loving the Antique Linen. So I treated myself to a local um, store. She had some for sale. If you buy three, get one free, or buy two, get one free or something. And it was great. So I bought about six. Don't tell my husband. All right, <laughs> this thing probably could use a new piece, but I haven't found a new piece yet. And I'm just going to rub the edges because I do like that um, old look. I don't want to, I don't want to contaminate the washi tape too much. I want it to be the star of the show, especially with those gold flecks in there. They're just so pretty. Um, but I do want to, I do want to age this piece a little bit. I love that look. gonna rub the ends here and I'm gonna do the same should we do a different color for the blue should we do something really bright Ooh, let's do the rust against the blue that could be really really pretty so I'll give it a whirl I don't think I need too much of this it's pretty strong color that's kind of fun so again just playing with the colors of the washi Mute it down a little bit. Some of this antique linen. Just tone it down just a touch. It's instantly looks old. I love that. And you can use some really beautiful lace here. <coughs> Excuse me. Some really beautiful lace or um, burlap or whatever it is the look you're looking for. Some you can use gold ribbon all kinds of stuff. What I have on hand is this elastic ribbon and it's kind of like a lace, but it's stretchy. And I got this at the thrift shop. So winner, winner. I got a whole roll of it for like five bucks. It was one of those start the car moments where you're running out of there because you're just so excited <laughs> to receive, to find such a, an awesome deal. And I use it all the time. So I'm just going to pull it through end to end. So I'll go in one way, come out the other. And then you can just tie it. Now this might be a little small. I haven't measured it, I just cut it. I might need to find a bigger piece. And I just tie it. So you could sew this uh, and slide it in behind here so you don't see it. But the knot, again, it doesn't bother me. So let's see if I've got a little journal here we can attach it to. Maybe this guy and just I want to do a dangle on him too I want to add the bird so I can just slide it on and now I have a little journal closure and it's really elegant I think and simple like the washi tapes the star of the show so let's do uh, let's put the ribbon through this guy and again you can make a whack load of these all ready to roll with different tie-off materials, sari silk, piece of an old bed sheet, whatever you've got, whatever you got kicking around. I do prefer the elastic because I, my journals are never the same size and I'm always adding to them so I can design it where it's a little bit bigger and makes accommodates a bit more room. So there's the other one. So let's do a hole up here. I'm going to use the smaller hole punch this time. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, I moved. That's okay. I'll use a bigger one now because I double punched it. So I was only going to use a little guy, but we'll use a big guy. I got stuck there for a second. Pull one of these guys out. Let's just pull two out and I'll use the 
big one for the bottom too, instead of fussing around. Okay, we'll put this on here. Again, doesn't need it, but it looks polished and pretty. Oops. <laughs> and squeeze it. Oh, getting messy. I'm getting messy here. <laughs> and then this one, let's take this off for a second. And we'll put one, where should we put this one? Maybe we'll put it down here. And we want the big hole. So we'll squeeze the big hole. And we'll put this guy in. Let's see if I can't squeeze it a little neater this time. There we go. This one's a bit messy. Aha! It wasn't in properly. Let's try again. Trying to turn it so you guys can see, which means I can't see. Okay, so now we have those, and now we have our little resin birdies. So they're rigid. They're basically little charms now. And then there, are, the skater is strong enough that I can punch a hole right through it. Now, if you're going to make earrings or jewelry or whatever, you might want to go in with. Um, uh, drill instead, so the hole is much smaller. There we go. So we have the hole, and I will reinforce these as well, just to have that polished, finished look. Though you don't really need to, because the resin's pretty strong. So this one I always open upside down. Yep. <laughs> I never know which way to open it. All right. Learned my lesson a few times on that one taking my time opening it slow so they don't end up everywhere. And I am going to now switch this to the smaller setting because I'm using smaller holes. And I'm just gonna squeeze that. So there you go. Nice little professional look. These are adorable. I really, I went, I went crazy making these. I just had so much fun making these. So there, I'm going to squeeze that one. So now I have my, my dangles. So you can add beads to these, chain. Um, what else? Let's see what I brought out here. So I did bring some stuff out. Now these are my, my little jewelry accessories here. Um, I have been collecting, so I use these little dollar store containers to hold things in. They're, they come in really handy. And some tools. So I have a cutter and some pliers. And these are actually jewelry pliers when these are just home hardware pliers. And I have bought some things. So I have bought a whack load of these little um, fasteners, which are these. Oh, my light. Sorry. Um, which just squeeze on. So we might end up using one of those. Uh, some wires for beads, and then I pulled out uh, some junk jewelry here that maybe we could use. I really like this because it's got feathers on it, so I guess it's an old earring. I guess it's supposed to be a dream catcher or something. Let's use one of those. I'm use one of those right now. Some beads, some other beads. Put some of these out. Like I said, it's going to be a long video. But I really, uh, really enjoy making this stuff. I have so much fun playing with all these little elements. And everything I, I do, like upcycle or whatever, I do a lot of upcycling. I love to mix the elements. So like metals and wood and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so here's some charms that I have gotten. Look at this little teacup. Like, how fun is that on a little English journal? Uh, an old earring. That's a charm. So these are all charms. Some of them are new. Some of them are used. A little hummingbird. We'll use that today. That's adorable. So, and the dry, I like the dragonfly too. The, the hardest part about this craft is choosing. You know? 
I, like, how do you pick what you like? It's hard. Okay, so I'll just dump that whole bag out. So that was like a broken necklace that I kept in a baggie. All right, so how are we gonna do this where you can see me? Move this over here. Okay, so uh, this piece here, I don't know what it came from, maybe a purse or something, it has a really nice piece of chain on it, which I'm going to use. So basically I just take all this stuff off and put it in a bag for another day. Maybe I leave one on, who knows. But right now I'm just opening up those old jump rings. Those I don't recycle. I just I just throw those away. And it's got a little heart on it, which I'm going to take off. And I'm going to replace a new jump ring. So you might have seen this on my finger. When I was at the um, jewelry store the other day, looking at beads and stuff, because I go in there quite regularly, more, more than I should, I saw this, and it's a tool for jump rings. And so you put the jump ring in here, and I'm still learning to use it properly. And then you put the, the jump ring on the side and split it open. So you don't have to keep constantly picking up another pair of pliers. I was like, a, oh, moment when I saw that. I was like, that's genius. Where have you been all my life? And so I'm just going to thread this through. And like I said, my hands are cold, so they're not really cooperating. And then you go back into the jump ring device. I'm sure it has a name. Like I said, I'm still learning to use it, so it's not a smooth transition for me yet. And close her up. I know I had to pick up one tool, so look, there's the little bird. And it hangs. It's so cute. So I might actually chop this chain in half and use it for two. So let's see if I can break this chain open. So two pliers for that. Sometimes they're welded and you can't and you have to cut them. And other times they are mini jump rings, basically. So there we go. Open that. I'm going to put another jump ring at the top. Use the bigger guy. So these are pretty cheap, these jump rings. They last a long time. I just buy them pretty regularly because I do go through a lot. I'm going to put this one in here and then reattach the bird in a sec. So I'm just going to go to my, my little jump ring. My little jump ring closer ring. <laughs> I'm sure it's got a name, but I didn't inquire. I just bought it and was so happy. And I've been practicing using it. So you can see it takes a little practice to get used to not suddenly holding pliers. But boy, when you get used to it, it sure does make for a very quick, um, quick and easy jewelry making device. So open. And I'm going to put this little piece here. And then we'll clip it to here. We'll probably open this jump ring again because I think I want to add some beads. I'm just going to thread it through here and close it up. And I have that. That's so cute. I just love it. Put the birdie on here. So another jump ring. And you can get different sizes, different thicknesses. You can also purchase wire and make your very own jump rings with tools. So there's, uh, there are ways to save money with these fun tools. And it doesn't take long to collect stuff. Um, when you find, if you go in a thrift shop or somebody gives you like their jewelry they don't wear anymore, uh, it doesn't take long before you have lots of goodies like this to play with. So I do want to incorporate this feather and maybe the dragonfly. And I think I want to use some beads. So I'm going to use this guy. And really decorate these little closures. And like I said, you can make a whack load of these all at once and really have some fun. So I'm going to just thread some beads on here. I just spent, think about it too hard. Uh, like this one. Actually, I think I'll, will I use the blue stone? It's too big. Too big for me. This little blingy one's nice. 
And again, different elements. So you got resin, you've got stone, um, glass, metal, all kinds of cute little bits and bobs here. I fold it over, just fold it like that. And then I cut, say a finger's width off. I'm just holding this, sorry if you can't see, I just don't want it flying in my eyeball. And then, oh, I didn't bring my round pliers. Dang. Well, that's not good. So you would use round pliers here to roll this back over. So I'm just going to use these so it's not going to make the nicest loop. But you need like um, round nose pliers for that. So that's one. And then we'll make another one real quick. Oh, there's one already made. That's kind of pretty. So that came off a piece of jewelry. Let's just use that. <laughs> Shortcut. I'm just gonna try and close myself a loop there to keep the jump ring in. There, that's pretty, I like that one. So let's put the dragonfly on this maybe, because it's big. So it's pretty big, pretty uh, loud piece, which is kind of fun. And again, you can build these to go with any theme. Uh, that you want. So if you have like a, like I said, the English teacup, that's so cute. You just have to find your cute little accessories. So dragonfly, and then my beads, and then I'll close it. Ta-da! That tool's so fun. And then I think I will add another jump ring to the jump ring that's already on there. Where's the opening here? Slide it open. Put it on here. And now I'll put it on, which one do I want it on? Should I put it on this one? Why not? Should I put it on one I haven't done anything with yet? Maybe this one, just so it doesn't compete with the bird. Let's do that. Sorry, changed my mind. That's how I roll. Let's do one that I haven't, because um, I really like the bird on their own kind of thing. And that one, that dangles a bit too big. It's a little too competitive. Oh, I was gonna show you the other way. Okay, well, let's do both. <laughs> it's one of those videos where I'm just making it up as I go. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so there's that. And I wanted to show you these too. So we could put one, put one on this side maybe. Or do I have another piece that isn't finished? No, nope, they're all finished. So let's finish what we were doing here. Let's put this, I think I need a bigger jump ring now. Something really big really big and really in your face because this is a big piece. And then again, it's still fits in there. There's two different slots, a thicker one and a thinner one. And I really love this tool. I can't say it enough. Look how pretty that washi tape piece is. This is one of the part of the flower. So there's a, a journal cover and this one orientates this way as well. I'll put that there. And back to this one. So let's do the little, let's just do the feather on its own as opposed to using these. I'm just gonna use the feather on its own on this one to decorate these washi tape closures. All right, another jump ring. I could do this all day. I hope this is giving you ideas on how to use washi tape, how to use recycled jewelry. Just have fun with all these different elements. You've got metal, you've got paper, you've got resin, you've got washi tape. You've got so much going on here. It just creates some real interest. You've got whatever tie you have, whether it's lace or, oh, I did that one backwards, lace or ribbon. Um, the one I used before, and I'll show you again is, I think, a type of wax string. 
and just have fun. All these different elements built around these really pretty washi tapes. So how cute is that? Let's put it on our journal here. Do we have another one? This one here. Oh, my light. My goodness. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on there. Here, I have my garden book. Put it on here. So again, no closure. I never have closures on my books because I never know what to do. And now I know what to do because I can use these. And I can make a bunch of them and really have fun. So now I have a book closure. That's really easy to get on and off, which is important to me. I don't want to spend hours untying a knot trying to get my book open. How cute is that? So that one, and we'll do this final little decorative piece, and then I will leave you be. <laughs> I think uh, we'll do... Let's use the, um, maybe we'll use the hummingbird on this one. So I open it up, throw the hummingbird on, throw this guy on, close this up. See how fast it works? I don't have to stop and pick up another tool. Really loving that. Anything that makes it effective. I think I paid $2 for this little ring. And then we'll hook it onto here. And close that up. There we go. We got that one. Let's put that one on our book. I think it went on this book, right? So there we go. Nice little closure with our little washi tape. So if you're interested in washi tape, definitely have a look at the washi tape store and um, I will again link that product code if you're interested in saving a little bit of money and uh, giving them a go and I hope you have fun playing with all kinds of goodies like this um, my desk is full of them and the possibilities are endless and here's one this is the one with the, the string so I just pull this and now my book opens. So it just threads through and I tie it back up. And that's that's something I like, something very simplified, very elegant. I mean, let the washi tape talk to you, you know? Let it let it tell you what it wants to do because it's just so pretty. Here's one where I did a chain with a dangle. And this washi tape is that one where you can write the name of the book or who the book belongs to. Another fun closure idea. And this was the first little birdie I did, which I love. I just think they're so cute. And they just keep going and going. Here's more dangle ideas. And you don't have to use the resin, but I do like that it kind of polishes off the washi tape into an ornament. And um, just takes it to the next level. And here's some little scraps. That's with those little squeezy closures, little jewelry accessories. Yeah, just keeps going and going <laughs> and going. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it was really long, but I hope it gave you some ideas and um, some inspiration for some really fun journal closures, some really beautiful washi tape. Check them out if you have time. And uh, I will see you in the next video, guys. Have a great day. Bye.